Okay. Then I'll land on. That is okay. the perfect. Uh, go live. Already people are waiting. Yeah. Uh, here, uh, neurology, pure FB viewers. Today we are uh, discussing about the supine PCNL. As you all know, uh, supine PCNL is not new thing, which is started way back in 1970s by Dr. Valdivia sir. Uh, after that, in last five years again, it picked up the momentum because of the RIRS as well as the ECIRS as well as simultaneous bilateral endoscopic surgery, which is just coming up. But in India, uh, before five years back, uh, Dr. Aditya Sharma, uh, who is uh, there at Lucknow uh, Apollo Hospital, has started uh, around I think seven years back. We will listen from him. Uh, where people have not accepted that much supine PCNL. Only few people in India were doing. Even I was not doing that supine PCNL few years back. But over a period of time, I realized that it has its own importance. It has its own advantages. So let us listen. Today I will share the screen and introduce the speaker. So today program is uh, uh, based on the supine PCNL basics. Uh, video based surgical discussion by Dr. Aditya K. Sharma. Dr. Aditya is very close friend of me and uh, we have many times met in conferences where I was presenting RIRS and he was presenting supine PCNL. In fact, we have done debates together and over a period of time I realized that he expanded his skills to even laparoscopy and he is one of the main key member in Alto group and actively participating in the uh, national and international academic activities very keen on learning new things and teaching. He is a senior consultant at the moment at Apollo Medics Super Speciality Hospital Lucknow has done training in endourology, laparoscopy and transplant from reputed centers from India and abroad. He has been practicing technique of supine PCNL for past many years as I told with extensive experience. He has presented his uh, fossil PCNL technique in various national and international platforms and has been actively popularizing supine PCL in India. In fact, I think it's published. His other area of expertise include advanced laparoscopic reconstructive urology. As recently I have seen, he is developing his own skill in uh, laparoscopic radical prostatectomy with good uh, uh, results like uh, uh, tumor free margin and complete clearance. So with this uh, academician in front of us, let us listen how he initially struggled 10 years uh, and then came to the present level of a pioneer work almost in India in supine PCNL. Over to Aditya. Thank you. Uh, thank you Chandmohan sir. Uh, Dr. Chandmohan has been my inspiration and I kept following his work and he is my senior and he has motivated us to do new things. And, uh, and as sir has told that we have met on many occasions, but this current pandemic state has prevented us from getting together, sharing our knowledge. But it is the sheer enthusiasm of Dr. Chandmohan sir that we are today discussing our expertise and our techniques on this uh, platform, which is uh, primarily focused on the technical aspect. And I, I really appreciate this initiative because most of the youngsters, they are not very clear about how they go about it and without any, you know, unnecessary data and everything, just uh, perceive the right technique and how they should be doing it. So because today's topic is supine PCNL, uh, Dr. Chandmohan already introduced that it is a very old technique since 1987 and uh, but till 2007, uh, there wasn't much activity. When the, the main reason was the, there was always fear of hitting uh, transperitoneal organs while uh, attempting a supine puncture. Because when we attempt supine, it's always in mind because bowel and everything comes in front. And the imaging technology was, pre before that it was primarily IVP and ultrasound. And at the same time, ultrasound guided punctures were not something which was very common. So having said that, that was the reason we lagged imaging. We were really not sure where is exactly bowel and where is exactly kidney while we are planning our puncture. But after year 90s and 2000, the, the technology in terms of imaging has improved a lot. 
CT scan has come up a big way and now it many many centers it is the primary mode of imaging and we are very sure before pre of uh, starting puncture itself that what is the position of the bowel the other issue was the position so from the technical point of view the the prone there is no not much of doubt you keep the patient so fine and just turn them flat and securing all the pressure points and that was pretty straightforward not much of instructions needed but in terms of supine it is much more i would say fluid position it is really not a very rigid or fixed position because your position may change a uh, little bit depending upon patient build depending upon uh, type of the surgery you are planning whether you are planning bilateral access whether you are planning access from below or not whether you are planning a supecaricial puncture or not so uh, position is little fluid in terms of that and uh, <laughs> i will just give a quick uh, uh, introduction about the basic common positions and why uh, we have standardized the fossmal position so before that we one should understand it is practically you know not very feasible to do uh, pcnl in a absolute supine position so supine per se is not a supine position as, as such so find is a idea where you don't have to reposition patient again and again once for the lower track access and once for the upper track access so that in in general any position which can provide is as good as supine next is the the basic uh, supine valdivia well position that was you know so you that had share the screen or i'll just uh, i'll just go go to that i'm just okay. going to that so in that position the problem was of uh, getting uh, right puncture and the supecaricial access was a issue so why we shift is my screen shared yeah, it is getting shared okay just uh, wait you are optimized if i am not using a screen audio so i'll be just using the uh, my okay. there's no voice over in this it screen. is uh, it is sharing uh, yeah it is is shared okay no problem okay. okay so why we have standardized to frankly oblique supine modified lithotomy position or the fossmal position because initially we experimented a lot with uh, you know various positions and we struggled to get a supecaricial puncture i will show how we do it and how we proceed so so this is the position so if the the pneumonic is fossmal it is frank free oblique supine modified lithotomy position so there are three component to this position in first part is the flank has to be free the <coughs> original position which was designed for uh, uh, supine pcnl the flank wasn't free so that was a issue that did not allow enough space for maneuverability of our scope before we position the patient we have to understand we have to get uh, markings the the surface anatomy has to be marked in terms of posterior axillary line posterior axillary line is a perpendicular line which is drawn from the uh, uh, posterior axilla and it falls perpendicular downward in general in general it will cut to the tip of the 12th rib but rib being a floating uh, structure many times it may not exactly fall in that line but in maximum number of times what i have seen uh, the line actually falls and, and cuts the tip of the 12th rib so even if many times my markings get wiped out while cleaning and painting draping the patient the we can palpate the tip of the 12th rib and we try to remain behind that next we have to position patient in three steps i will be sharing so this is the first step where we put patient is a normal lithotomy position in this position the, there is a small bolster is placed below the buttock and we have on the same side of the buttock and we have put a normal lithotomy position and this small bolster elevates the same side of a hip by 30 degree so that is the first step of the positioning
in second step what we do we rotate the torso of the patient between 70 to 90 degree depending upon our requirement of access of the function so initially if you're not planning uh, much of the supraglacial access you can choose to keep patient between 70 degree and if you're planning a supraglacial access and you are planning primarily a supraglacial access you you should have a 90 degree perpendicular angle of the shoulder this is the second step where the position is oblique supine so in this position it creates lot of space so there is a common concern uh, for many of the uh, you know people who are trying uh, supine pcnl that whether they will get enough space for to maneuver the kidney maneuver the stone whether they can get stone from any access so in this position it is very much appreciable the entire back of the patient in fear the a third of the other side of the back of the patient is accessible from this side so it is this position gives very good exposure as one does get in a uh, prone position conventional prone position so this helps in by doing oblique supine we have advantage of increased space uh, for our puncture as well as maneuverability of the scope and also it gives very good supraglacial puncture which i will explain how it is done and uh, how does this position help in that third step now because in this position the same arm goes to the other side it has to be rested in third step what we are doing we are giving a modified lithotomy how do we modify the lithotomy we saw the last uh, in uh, last scene the here the leg is in normal lithotomy and now what we do we open up the flank further by lowering the same side of the lithotomy pole once we lower down and make it perpendicular here we can see it is almost perpendicular because we do it very frequently from the beginning it is done we lower it down so that the flank is open and the hindrance of iliac crest goes away if we are having an inferior puncture so these are the three steps and three components of the position are met in first step the the bolster is kept to make flank free and the lithotomy is given in second step we turn the torso and we make the torso 70 to 90 degree to allow oblique supine which gives access to supine calyx and gives more space for the puncture and in third step we lower down the same side lithotomy pole and it allows uh, takes away the hindrance of iliac crest and creates more space now the positioning is done it is in this position why we have standardized in this position all kind of punctures can be done so we don't have to change position depending upon the patient and the case type we don't have to instruct our staff differently every time so we can train them how they are supposed to position the patient we can have access which is endo endoscopic combined interlinear surgery for the same side or the simultaneous bilateral endoscopic surgery if we are planning a bilateral access so all these modalities of access are possible by this single position so patient is painted and draped draped only once we don't uh, drape patient twice we don't position patient twice so this saves uh, you know in terms of draping i will i will take a moment to share this is a conventional uh, pcnl drape which we use for the pcnl and the same drape covers the entire patient so we are not using two drapes we are not using repeated positioning repeated dripping so this also saves cost in terms of material and time so now first i will demonstrate the infracostal inferior puncture so inferior or the mid-calicial punctures are almost the same so how we do it i will be just explaining so here we can see a pel simple we have kept a simple stone for the demonstration here it is a simple pelvic calculus 1700 uh, 1654 ounce field unit and a 17.5 mm size and few secondary stones are also there in pcl so how we do it in normal you know, as we do any pcnl we know that uh, you know we we position the patient and we put the uterine catheter so the assistant by the time assistant is doing endoscopy and he is putting the uterine catheter 
the main surgeon can come from the side and plan his puncture while looking at the C arm, looking the position of the stone and where he wants to take the puncture. As the RGP is done, <coughs> the contrast is introduced into the system and it is nicely filling the system. Now is the time we have to take the puncture. So first the site of the puncture, the first confusion is there where one should start the puncture. Puncture should start just behind the posterior axillary line and the puncture angle of the puncture is perpendicular to the skin. In this angle, one has to enter the system. After that, once we are entering the system, so one can see here, this is the area I want to demonstrate that you get, you get the nudge over the kidney. You will see while I'm hitting the kidney, the kidney is getting pushed in the real time image. So what happens when we are hitting the kidney, it is getting pushed that gives us the initial direction of puncture is right. We are not getting it grossly wrong. We are not grossly above the kidney or we are not grossly behind the kidney. The other thing I would like to tell, if we get the site of the puncture right and we follow these things, it is practically impossible. It has never happened to me. And I can definitely say you can't do the same uh, two things together. You can't be in the colon and do the puncture, the right puncture. Either you will be in the colon or you will be in the kidney. You, it is not possible that you go through the colon and into the kidney unless it is a classical case of retroregulant colon and retroregulant colon is a risk for you know colonic injury for any piscinal procedure be it a prone or supine so once we get the initial direction right we we know we are hitting the kidney i will just like to rewind this so you can see i am going back now i am coming you can see this the kidney is getting pushed push, 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 and suddenly you get a slight giveaway. So I, it gives a feeling that maybe I'm in the system, but we need to reconfirm whether we are actually in the system or not. Now you see the position of the CM. The position of CM is uh, absolute, you know, zero position, 90 degree angle, and there is no rotation as of now. Now what we have to do, we have to move CM in craniocaudal direction. The, the X-ray tube is below and the image intensifier is above the image intensifier goes granially. So once we rotate, now is the time to rotate it. So now I would like to introduce few basic rules because every time it becomes confusing whether when we rotate the C arm, first of all, it is only possible to rotate C arm Cranially and the exit tube will go cordially because on this side is the table mount on the whether the table is mounted so the exit tube can't go actually you know uh, cranially so the only movement which is possible is image intensifier always goes towards the cranial side and in this position we have to remember a simple mnemonic or short form aspo we call it aspo so aspo is anterior same and posterior opposite what is anterior same so if the needle, your needle is anterior to the kidney, it will move in the same direction as the movement of the X-ray tube. So you can see here. Now in this case, we have rotated the C-arm. You can see we have rotated the C-arm. And now the needle position is moved in the same direction here the needle looks i am in the system but as soon as i rotate it the needle also goes down x tube goes down needle goes down so this means that i am anterior to the system anterior same now we see what happens if i am posterior to the system If I'm posterior to the system or the posterior to the kidney, the X-ray tube is going down, but the needle will go up. So this will be posterior opposite. Posterior, if the needle is posterior, it will move opposite direction to the kidney or the system or the X-ray tube. So this is the anterior same posterior opposite. We ESCO mnemonic and now we see how we apply it in real case. Here you can see I am rotating, I am rotating the See arm, here you see the needle is going in the same direction. So I am anterior to the kidney. 
you can see the needle is moved downward in the same direction of the axial tube. Now we will rotate it back. You can see it comes back. So that means I am anterior. I need to readjust my puncture. So now I am, you can see, you can appreciate I made the direction little posterior. Now you can see the indentation over the, you can see the again the indent. I'll take a moment back to show that part. Now, if the puncture is right, you can see, you can really appreciate how the calyx is getting indented by the needle. Most of the time, I don't have to turn the C-arm because by now I feel that I my direction is right. Now you see, while I'm rotating the C-arm, there is no relative movement of the needle or the calyx. And of course, when I withdraw withdraw the needle, uh, the, the the stillet and the water comes out, that will confirm that the puncture is right. So the puncture is the most, if you, I have asked most people who wanted to start supine, uh, that what is their, what do, you, what do they think that the biggest limitation for them in terms of the supine PCN and according to them, getting the puncture right. If they are in the system, they are sure that they can manage any PCNL. So I also agree that getting the puncture right is the most important thing. But if you follow these simple techniques, uh, I can, definitely say you can never miss a puncture it has not happened to me so far that any time the puncture did not happen so getting the puncture is a surety if we follow this technique we can see this in the superior calyx cell puncture also how we do it i will quickly show the same technique we have to understand basics of the superior calyx cell puncture the superior calyx are more medial and posterior and the inferior calyx and medial calyx is more lateral and anterior so the puncture site has to move backward. Now I will show how, how the oblique supine position in the fosmal helps you getting a good supicalition puncture. In this technique, the puncture site is exactly same where you would do in your prone PCNL. So in terms of supicalition access, the entry angle and everything is same. You can see the supicalition marking will be slightly uh, posterior and medial to the spine. So we, our point of entry will be more behind. So we need more space in terms of that. You can see there is a supicultural stone. Now I'm going into the system. Again, same technique will follow. I'm trying to get in. And you can see the kidney <coughs> is moving, but I'm not sure whether I'm in. I again turn the C-arm. Now you can see the needle is going in the same direction downward. That means I am anterior to the kidney. Now I reposition my needle and try to get the puncture correct. And this time you can see the calyx moving, getting indented by the needles. Now you can see. So I am right into the system. Now we can pass the guide wire. And again, same thing. You can see there is no relative movement between uh, kidney and the needle. And of course the water comes out and you pass the guide wire. So with this, we get the puncture. The dilatation and access technique is again simple. If we do a single step dilatation, in first step, we pass the Elkin rod, Elkin needle and the cannula. At that time, you can pass a safety guide wire if you want. Uh, many cases we keep if the stone bulk is more, and we hope that sometime we may come out, slip out of the system, we keep safety guide wire. And the dilatation is done in the single step with whatever size. Now, we mostly we don't go beyond 22. Uh, most of the time I use uh, mini uh, necroscope 12 French for uh, any stone size practically. Now what are the advantages of the technique? Of course the supine we know the system pressures remain low. I rarely use a forcep. I almost never use a forcep for a smaller stone. Many times if the stone gets stuck sometimes to dislodge I use the forcep. So the life of your forceps also increase. You don't land. All the stones come up, keep coming out by the gravity. So if the stone moves to the inferior calyx, you can go and get them from the superior calyx. <coughs> and on the contrary, if we are getting a stone which has moved from inferior calyxial puncture to the superior calyx, one can enter from inferior to superior calyx very easily in this position because of the modified lithotomy, the iliac crest doesn't hinder the movement of scope while going from uh, inferior calyx to superior calyx. So this is the added advantage. <coughs> uh, 
so any time any amount of stone bulk can be removed all the principles of pcnl remain same you want to do with tube without tube you want to put a stand you don't want to put stand so all these things can be comfortably done so we can leave the guide wire tubeless without tube so of course uh, most of the stone which we do now are first of all are in spinal anesthesia and in this position we never ever have to change the position and i have so far i have never converted my case from you know uh, prone uh, supine to prone so far it has never disappointed me so i would be hopeful uh, this is the end of my presentation i'll be hopeful if i if there are any queries any question or any clarification needed on any part thank yeah. you dr chandra excellent you have uh, clearly 120 viewers so you have finished in exactly 20 minutes time 20 22 minutes sir amazing video you have made in fact this is the way actually i wanted everybody to present so that if next time they see they can quickly go in short period of time when they are traveling click the link and just imagine before going surgery also you can click anyway because we finished in time because i am also doing may may not be as experienced as you are but i wanted to ask you some quick questions number 1 I have faced that in supracostal puncture. I was thinking little medial, but it was gone through the lower border of the liver without any problem. Do you feel that fastmill position and go as medial as possible? Do like a bullseye is correct in supine PCNL, or you can play a little bit of triangulation. I hope you got the point. Yeah. yeah. so i would i would like to explain that thing uh, boss actually what happens uh, in if the liver is liver lip many times you goes behind the kidney we have seen that uh, especially if the liver is enlarged we have seen many times in laparoscopy that we appreciate while doing kidney dissection the liver was going so far behind and many times during seeing the ct itself we have a idea okay liver is extending below and down so what i generally do i don't take exact first of all bull size is not possible in supine position not possible bull size is not at all possible not it's not possible so we have to use triangulation technique only but i don't go very high in terms of puncture so as i showed in the uh, position video the uh, the ba entire back is exposed in this position Yes. So whatever puncture we do in prone position, the technique remains the same. Yes. It is just that we do a bullseye there uh, if somebody is using bullseye method, and here we use the triangulation method. I generally don't go above eleventh trip, so I I prefer being is between eleventh and twelfth. Never above tenth trip. I sometimes between tenth and eleventh trip and eleventh and twelfth trip mostly. So with this, it has never disappointed me, and so far I have not had an injury. but of course if uh, if the liver is really going behind and hepatomegaly is there if the lip is going nobody so can avoid that a little bit of ct picture axial yes, cut yes, reading yes. before puncturing is very 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 important you say in the beginning also you mentioned that technology has improved so read the ct because it is in the supine position anatomy will not change honestly my second question sometimes when you are not able to flush with the ureteric catheter especially in the inferior calyx where the tract is long gravity is there water do not reside in the pcs so any small bleeder in the beginning appears irritating and especially when you put the lithotripter probe it looks more bleeding like in supine pcl this happens only for 5 minutes like in even prone till you create some space and amplage readjust for closing the uh, dam closing the uh, renal parenchymal defect uh, it happens more so in supine is my feeling last two years i have not done prone honestly i am doing all supine only so i feel that sometimes uh, same thing if it happens in conference they may say that are yaar itna bleeding kyo ho raha like that feeling what is your feeling honestly so, i would like to answer this question in two part uh dr chandramohan is now leader of supine pcn in india and uh, of course other modalities ecirs and simultaneous bilateral 
he is doing he is doing more so fine pcl than rest of the india combined <laughs> so and other thing is uh, coming to your question i do agree that the pressures are low uh, and the because we have to imagine when we are doing a prone po position pcnl yes. the entire water column is sitting on the calyx yes. so, yes. of course, so it washes out the blood and everything easily but once the stone is blocking the pcs because the stone is beyond and it is blocking the infundibulum there is not much of a space to water to go and just we entered initially it may appear more but so far i have not found it uh, it may be you know visually it may look uh, like it is a problem yes but this problem is less if we are using a mini nephroscope yeah. so 12 french nephroscope is still a lot of space is there so how i do it i go for a 20 22 french amplas i don't go for you know small 15 you know, or 18 okay i okay. go for 20 22 amplas so okay. the surgery is finished quickly and i get more space for the water drainage second thing is i use a mini scope so the scope takes less space third part is the if the system is still not standing we put a rubber cap many uh, many of surgeons use it i hope uh, uh, you getting the idea rubber cap around the nephroscope which blocks the water outflow you don't use pump in any of the case anyway no no never never never, never, never. never. because pump for pcl is not uh, not good not good idea Uh, even not for uh, because suddenly it may you know push and even the i have seen even amplas coming out suddenly with lot of pressure one fourth question is asked from uh, uh, hussein kalifala how to deal with obese patients especially in supine pcl you may have a little longer track and shorter ampla sheet i think this is a grand old question uh, one should buy a longer ampla sheet i want to listen from you so there uh, yeah of course the obvious answer you gave that if you should have a longer ampla sheet and of course you can use a you know blue ampla dilator you can cut it to, to your suitable length and you can use it to your uh, you know bend okay. which is needed and the other thing which can be done is we really don't always have to go so lateral we go lateral in supine in the position which i showed we go lateral in supine so that it works for our advantage yeah. but it should not become my disadvantage yes if yes. if i if i see i need a longer track if i go laterally i'll just go where i would do my prone pcl yeah, puncture i'll go my medial so it is so, better not to go lateral unnecessarily yeah it should uh, be your advantage as much necessary not... as much necessary you have to go that sal yes. that's why if you tilt the patient more medially all things will fall in line only problem is contrast will fall on to spine so do you feel that a thicker contrast should be used so that spine will not come into picture uh, definitely so one part of course uh, you said that thicker contrast should be used but the problem which i find with that is uh, because it uh, obscures the stone also yes uh, so that becomes little confusing because too many stones Actually, lot of juniors ask, sir, if everything PCS is on spine, we are afraid that we may hit vessels. Something that that three-dimensional concept they have to understand. With this uh, CM, you sold uh, uh, opposite uh, if it is posterior and uh, same side is anterior. Uh, did you ever felt uh, that the spine interferes with your puncture? Yeah, so, many, many, many times, times, many, many times. times, and that is, one uh, that, uh, that is but uh, you know. Uh, with experience you 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 eyes yeah. learn to avoid all that distraction but i must tell the way you have shown calicial the second point you told that the colon cannot be it is very important that the moment you reach the kidney you will understand that you are nearer to calyx the moment you reach the calyx you will be clearly understanding that means without shifting to uh, whatever few days back monoplonary said without shifting you can readjust Fine adjustment you can do in other position. Uh, not major adjustment. Never no, major. Not, never major adjustment. Never major adjustment. If Because you think, if you think the moves. kidney, yeah, if, if you think so much, if you think the kidney is not hit in the initial direction of puncture, totally wrong. Come back, come back, come back, come back totally. and go again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just change even the position of the needle out the entrance side also. If and it about is not the, at all moving. About the. Uh, c arm position i would suggest rotating c arm in opposite direction the image intensifier goes away and the x-ray tube comes little towards you 10 10 degree yeah 10 degree will take away the spine 
you will not see spine in your line of kidney that, that's a very simple thing that, that's an important point that's a very important point that's a very very important point coming to the uh, fifth question if i have seen that uh, if any large stone is there in the upper calyx if a stone is there in the lower calyx if i go through the lower i can reach the upper very well in supine do you agree for that upper uh, calyx is reached very easily especially with the mini nephroscope we especially with mini nephroscope agree but i found that from middle calyx to lower from middle calyx to lower somehow supine pcn a little little for example if you have a large stone in the inferior medium size stone in the middle will you go from inferior to middle or middle to inferior both are accessible so actually what i do now you also may be doing i do more of a ecrs everything yeah, is yeah. at hand so i yeah. really don't bother taking second puncture most of the yes, time yes yes ha- having said that so if answer you... smartly or answering but you are not answering my question i am i'm coming will you, to that. will you go from middle to lower or lower to middle in supine pcl if you have both access with an angle middle to uh, you puncture middle for example in prone you see chinese technique dr kadgi sir everybody says that middle if you go 90% you can reach upper ureter lower calyx maybe upper pole also so it is isocentric with the pelvis so that all the stones will come out by themselves in fact in supine pcnl all the calyces are isocentric you can get the water e- the stones easily but only problem is turning to which calyx to which, which calyx, calyx to which calyx, calyx. Uh, so, i am asking so to so to get the the advantage of uh, this approach one has one can follow the same technique which is done in prone our middle calyceal puncture again can be more uh, more medial yeah. and you start little higher if you are planning yeah. to go because the skin to kidney and calyx distance also determines yes. you you have to imagine if i have to if i have to go like this uh, yeah. i hope i am able to show it yes, so so this is the this is the calyx This, this is my puncture. Obliquity, obliquity. So we have to uh, take advantage of longer track. We make the track as much as straight if I want to go in this direction, yes, rather than going like this and hoping that I enter like this. That will cause bleeding. Yes. So uh, all those methods or techniques can be utilized here. So supine is just in broader concept. It's an idea where you don't reposition the patient. That's I all. can say in formal position, you can. follow all the tricks all the tips of the prone pcnl without doing the you know positioning and repositioning again anteriorly mal rotated kidneys are not uncommon you often see uh, harshu kidney or isolated anteriorly mal rotated kidneys do you think that uh, supine does not have any disadvantage i think anterior mal rotated kidney i think horseshoe kidney again i have done uh, at least uh, four, five to seven cases i, yeah. I have also kidney. done two three so uh, in recent trip, i did not find much of the problem doing that but anterior mal rotation see what happens there all the calyces are actually more anterior than lateral so yes. isn't supine a advantage uh, because yes. your excess is more lateral yes, i think yes. it is a disadvantage yes. to prone what exactly i want to listen in supine pcnl the tract is little lateral half centimeter tract may be long but access to anterior is very good with that you can go to anterior and then go to posterior whereas in prone most of the times they enter posterior from there they have to access the anterior here it is not like that you can go to both calyces in the last part still you are on the broadens line or later border of the kidney you agree that yeah yeah totally yeah. totally yeah. Okay, absolutely now now coming to the ecrs uh, part uh, when you said that fastbill position normally if the stone is in the inferior calyx i do not rotate as much as you told i try to keep 45 30 degrees so that other person will have space to go into the uh, uh, pcs do you agree that fastbill also gives good access to the Uh, uh, access sheet from the below. I mean R I R S. Yeah, it, it is not a problem. Not it a may problem. be little, little uh, problem initially. Uh, yeah. 30 degree pelvis is done anyways. I mean, uh, that we do only 30 degree tilt only. Oh, so the orifice, yeah, orifice is uh, little up. You one has to find 
once the axis sheath is there it should not be perfect one more thing i have seen you are pushing the shoulder blade at the head end part with a different instrument can't we use i use 3 liter saline bottle below the shoulder blade or 1 uh, liter wrapped in 1 uh, liter were wrapped in this you are using a shoulder supporter like in what you use in laparoscopy Lap laparoscopy because uh, because I, i wanted to demonstrate there are two uh, parts to it i we wanted to standardize the position because sometimes i say make 60 degree up sometimes i say make 90 degree up shoulder it becomes yeah. very confusing for the staff and everybody yes. so other thing is if i'm 70 80 degree is fine but it is very difficult to achieve with the bottle so okay. supically then we don't get enough space the bottle will take more space than the shoulder support then your scope if you are going from superior to inferior will actually you know go and hit the uh, support which is behind the shoulder so i guess uh, it is uh, i think easily available any uh, with any table it should not be a problem to be used ah now my eighth question a stag arm calculus uh, what is your experience i have tried second puncture also no problem i hope uh, uh, there should not be any problem when compared to prone pcnl supine can do all stag arms with the same concept do you agree for that yeah definitely i think it it comes with ex one with one rider of course yeah. it, uh, like who starts pcnl cannot expect clearing all staghorns within you know first 20 30 pcnl one should not try to do that yeah. same way in supine also one should go slow gain experience gain confidence with the technique if you know how to drive you can drive in any situation any terrain Yes. But, you know, beginning of the learning driving only we should not challenge ourselves. Yeah. So stag one, I have gone up to four punctures, and uh, we have cleared a not issue. And four punctures, I prefer more punctures than a bigger track personally. Yeah. What I do, I will put uh, 20, 22 French most of the time, 20 or 22. I always, always use a mini nephroscope because it gives better maneuverability, takes less space in the system. and yes. all the stag horns we can your mini nephroscope of choice I, I, no conflicts of interest generally i'm asking we have a stores 12 so this, this is this uh, is a I, rotating I, water I, channel i'm using a uh, sholis also it is also very nice it's slender 12 french same like starch and a little longer actually but both are okay even wolf is dredson uh, wolf is also okay because it has a uh, outer sheath 15 french all of them are good now uh, one more question you told that posterior axial line uh, falls a little posteriorly on to the 12th rib what is the ideal uh, what is the ideal time you have to draw it is it uh, before surgery or while sitting position or by the side of the arm in supine position or after positioning whatever the bolts you keep when should you draw that line because it is variable long length line that is the determinant of your puncture entry So initial first five cases I was drawing anteriorly. In fact, I had a case of colonic injury, but after that never I have gone nearer to the uh, colon or this thing. What is your take for the juniors? How to draw a posterior axillary line? So it is part of you know marking the surface anatomy basic. So it has to be done in anatomical position. Uh, okay. Maybe patient standing straight in anatomical position or no, line I, line so. The book says that standing or sitting is correct. Well, I use it either lying so fine, perfectly yeah. so fine, or standing perfectly straight without okay. lifting the hand. I guess lifting is fine. No, without uh, turning the hand, if you ah, turn turning the hand, yeah, turning the hand, hand has to, yeah, it lifting has to turn to the body. Right. Otherwise, it goes uh, anterior. If you draw anteriorly, probably you are bound to uh, go, bound to uh, <laughs> go nearer to the column. That is a very important point. Now, coming to the last question. if you uh, if you uh, have you ever done prone pcnl why you have learnt supine who is your mentor what made you that this is useful because i remember that you were not doing rirs so crazily at that time still you sticked on to supine pcnl the reason why i changed to supine is i was doing lot of rirs sometimes stone burden looks so much you can't do by rirs then i developed interest that are yeah pura why to turn i can do it like that what made you to not to go to prone pcnl so uh, 
Prone PCNL, uh, definitely, uh, I, I was doing since my MCH, I was doing prone PCNL only. So it was not a issue of that. I was not happy or something like that. The other thing, we, we used to do a lot of, uh, in private practice, we used to do a lot of uh, RIRS. In fact, in urban private practice, we do more RIRS than PCNL. Yeah. But the, when I saw the technique first, it just, I mean, very difficult to answer, just mentor? clicked. Who was your mentor? Uh, mentor in the sense I did not learn it formally with them. Yeah, okay, okay. So I did it, but yes, uh, they, there are of course masters and leaders around the world. Yeah. I, I could, I was lucky enough to you know see them doing it. Uh, Dr. Guido Gusti is there, Dr. Yeah. Valdivia is there. So they are the people, I mean, their, their work is all over the places. Yes, yes. So I started. You seen their videos and studied and then started yourself. Not exactly, because I tried but I failed miserably honestly because yeah. to learn somebody's technique you have to really go and work with them yes sir. then slowly yes. we devised our own method we devised the position what worked for us and what I would suggest that everybody I don't say this is best or this is not best it may yeah. not work it may or may not work for everyone everybody has to find what works for them and stick to them actually I, I, I honestly want to share my opinion one and a half year uh, three, two years back, you came to my hospital for RIRS mini pair workshop. You have taken a lot of time in uh, uh, 12th rib. You are explaining, explaining 12th rib posterior axial line. I listened that. That imprint was there. Second, I went to Trichy for the conference where Arun sir is also one senior. So yeah. sooner we may have talked with him also. And uh, that uh, there are some team, uh, Vikram and uh, Govardhan uh, and uh, uh, Karthikeyan. These three were doing side by my workshop. So I was doing one RIRS, I was going to the other theater. They were doing repeatedly punctures. These two, like uh, these four people, I watched and then I started. So I honestly say that thank you very much for that. I'm enjoying as of now last two years, these four people have influenced, five people have influenced me to do it. I'm feeling very comfortable with the uh, endoscopic combined intrarenal surgery. Recently I've done three cases of simultaneous bilateral endoscopic surgery, which is not possible with prone. But supine people say that bilateral supine cannot be done. Uh, it can be done with uh, 5 minutes of time changing the position but not like uh, too much uh, changing. I think in obesity, uh, cardiology compromised patients, supine PCNL has great advantages. With this uh, we almost reached 47 minutes. In fact this is the shortest uh, possible time discussed with a lot of points. Uh, if with your permission should we conclude the session? Yeah, definitely. I'll yeah. just uh, put you a closing take, take a message, uh, yeah, closing remarks. Yeah, closing uh, points I would like to give. I think it is just a matter of time. I mean, I'm not saying something is superior or inferior. When we have a lot of available uh, armamentarium, like flexible scopes are there, everybody is doing RIRS, doing supine and doing a ECRS with time will become a natural choice. It will. It is going to replace even supine PCNL. It will be part of ECRS. Because yes. now 90% of my cases are endoscopic combined. I yes. don't, rarely I do a isolated supine. So yes. it is not a matter of debate whether yes. this is better or not. It will become a natural choice when we see the advantages. The I am really be thankful. ECIRS. Debate should be with ECIRS. True, ECIRS versus what else? Uh, so ECIRS not. versus else. <laughs> uh, that has a lot of advantages. Small stones are common. Small middle calyx, upper calyx stones are common. They can be picked up and given to the nephrostomy track is the biggest advantage yes. in uh, supine PCNL. Yes, sure. very good. So, so, thank you so, very much, uh, Chand Mohan Thank you very much. For... Thank you for sparing your valuable time. Um, this uh, last time I could not understand the uh, as of uh, anterior same and uh, opposite uh, posterior. That is a very good uh, this thing norm and it, it simplifies only one direction you do and immediately come up or down. Thank you. That is the best point taken.